Here's a Samsung A52 that does not charge, has no image because it has a damaged display connector. And in today's video, we're going to use micro soldering to replace this FPC and get it all working. Hi, I'm Jesse from VCC Board Repairs. Thanks a lot for joining us here on channel. If you like these type of videos where I walk you through how to do full micro soldering repairs, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel to see more like this and share this video with all your friends. Also, if you need this repair, I will link my contact info below. I would also link to all the tools if you want to do this repair yourself. So make sure you check out the links. I will also link this t-shirt. So if you do micro soldering, pick one up as well. So let's go ahead and get started with this repair tutorial. Okay, so first I want to show you kind of what's going on, why this happens. So this is a A52, but this issue is actually common across many different Samsung models like the uh, A32, A12, and a few other versions. But basically, you know, this is the phone. The back has, is basically the back cover. If you remove this, there's another little plastic cover over the main board. So this main board is the main brains of the phone, but down here is a daughter board. This houses the charging port and this specific model also the display plugs into this board and then from here it goes up here so if you can imagine if this is disconnected then you're not going to have anything coming from this bottom part like so it won't charge you won't get any image so depending on the model you know when the connector breaks you'll lose certain functions so as you can see the connector is here and what happens is if the phone gets smashed this gets impacted and it like physically breaks the connector. So if you look closely, you can see the connector is missing the whole bottom row of the connector. So basically that makes the whole flex useless. There will be no, virtually no communication from the bottom board to the top board or the daughter board to the main board. So for whatever reason, Samsung's are real prone to this issue. I've seen this on uh, Note 10s, uh, S20s, Basically any that has the main board, battery and daughter board, kind of this style, will have connectors along this bottom row and I guess just the impact breaks those connectors and then you have issues. So let's go under the microscope and actually start this repair. So here's a close up of the connector. It doesn't appear like any surrounding components got damaged but the connector itself is missing a whole big chunk. And here's the replacement connector, which I sourced from Mobile Centrix, which I'll link down below in the description. Uh, you could also get it from other places, but that's where I buy it. I will also see if I could link to AliExpress in case you're not in the US, or I guess maybe it might be cheaper, I don't know. But um, yeah, here's the connector. I'm using the me or yeah, the Meijing K20 Pro board holder. I just like the versatility of this board holder because it has many different shapes of boards it can support. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started with this. So I like to use 400 Celsius and 80 air to remove connectors. So I'm gonna apply some flux. You need flux for pretty much any kind of soldering. And essentially the goal is to heat up the, the connector, but you don't want to keep your hot air in one spot. You want to keep it moving. That way you can spread the heat across all the solder joints that you're trying to melt. And since this is just a connector we're going to replace, you don't necessarily need to keep it intact. So if it falls apart, then it doesn't really matter. So there you can see how I'm able to grab it on one end and I can move it. So that means the solder joints on this side have melted, but not the other half. Oh look, this part came off. Okay, I got this part. Let's get to the last part. Okay. 
All right, cool. That came off pretty clean. So apply some flux. Now I'm going to put some 183 solder, 183 Celsius solder. This is lower temp than the factory solder. This makes uh, soldering the replacement component a lot easier as it will install quicker. So I'm just going to tin all these pads. And then for FPCs, what I like to do is actually wick away the ground pads at the end. Because these usually take more heat to melt. And what will happen is the connector will kind of sit on this hill of ground pads. And it won't lay flat and then it will be hard to install. So I'm using hot air and wick to kind of flatten these out. And then it's kind of reflowing the all the pads here. So this is what the ground pads. Well this I think this one's not ground, but you know basically the pads here at the end. So you can see a what it should look like. All right, so this connector, like I mentioned, is brand new. And I got it from mobilecentrics.com. Although now that I think about it, I believe they require you to have uh, an actual business to buy from them. So if you're just a hobbyist, you might need to contact them. If this, if this is truly DIY, I don't recommend you do this yourself if you never soldered before. Send it to a professional. We do offer this repair. If you need this done, contact me through my website, vccboardrepairs.com. If you are a repair shop following this tutorial, then you should be able to buy from Mobile Centrics, but also link to AliExpress in case you have any troubles ordering from them, or I'll see what other vendors have it. So the goal here is to line up the connector to sit right over the pads. So here you can see these pads here are lined up with these gold pins. So that's pretty much the whole, if those are lined up, then the rest should be lined up and then just make sure your up and down alignment is good too. By the way, I do offer B2B as well. So if you're a repair shop and looking to outsource it, I do offer discounted pricing for repair shops for this and many other repairs. So like no power, not charging on, on iPhones, iPads. I don't do MacBooks, but I can refer you to someone who does. So the goal here now is to reinstall this connector. I, I have it at 400 Celsius in the ADR. air. And the goal here is to have your hot air really far away and just kind of move it fast back and forth. And the goal here is to kind of just warm up the area, essentially kind of like preheating it in a way. You want to do this for as long as possible. The longer the better because you're, what you're doing is heating up the whole area but not blowing away the connector. And if you have enough flux on there, that should also keep the connector from flying away. If, what happens if you're too close, too quick, you'll blow away the connector or you'll warp the connector. And this is my last one, so I, ha I can't mess this one up. Or otherwise, I have to wait a few days before I could complete this repair. So hopefully this all goes smoothly. So now I've slowly kind of creep creeped up closer. And what you want to look for is the pins on the board. The pads are melted. You guys can see they are. I'm still constantly moving the, the hot air, but I'm just moving the board itself so I can put it on camera. And I think that's good. So now the question is, did it get soldered on? So a good way is to just angle the board up as best you can. And do first a visual inspection, 
So right now it does look like everything's sitting flat. Although one sign that it didn't solder is if the pins are still gold, that means the solder most likely didn't flow up the from the pads to the pin. Like these are you know silver, but these are kind of gold. So you might have to manually touch those up. Here's another one that kind of looks like that. But the best way is to get a blade and push pretty much every pin. Yeah, see like this one, I can see it moving. So that's definitely not soldered on. These other ones kind of move too. Yeah, so let me ref not reflow, uh, redo these solder joints. Luckily, we do have a lot of room here, so my micro pencil iron should be able to fit. And as always, we gotta have plenty of flux on where you're gonna be soldering. This is my 183 Celsius solder, Kester uh, 6330 something. So what I'm gonna do is just go like that. Let me zoom in a little closer so you guys kinda see the technique. Have some solder on your iron and just kind of tap the pins and you can kind of see how the solder will flow to the pin And the goal, see, so I have a J tip on here and I kind of just curve it inwards and touch the pad and the pin. It makes it the best way to flow the solder and make a solid solder joint. All right, so I can kind of tell how much solder is flowing. So what I'm gonna do is add some solder to my iron tip. And when I do it, it'll flow more solder Let's keep going across. Now these two points are kind of hard to reach. So my iron tip has a big bubble of solder. So I'm gonna clean that off on the uh, my brass wire. And then now I kind of have a little more room. And there you go. So I was able to get in there, even though I touched these caps here, I was still able to kind of do that solder joints. So now same thing on the other side. Although this side appears to have a lot more components. So hopefully I could still fit my iron tip there. So this side is a little harder to see just because of the angle of the board. But I can kind of see how the solder joint is flowing. Let me see if I adjust my Uh, polarizer light. All right, we're just gonna have to assume it's being soldered. That's one of the nice things about this iron tip is because it's curved, I'm able to easily kind of reach in here at this angle without kind of rotating the whole board. So what I like to do is kind of rub the pad and the pin left and right. That helps kind of flow the solder. If you just touch it directly, it might not flow as well. All right, we're almost done here. Also, ground pads are a little tough sometimes. It won't take any solder because the thermal mass doesn't transfer as easy. So you have some pads you're like rubbing the iron is not doing anything, then it's probably a ground pad. Also, if it's not flowing, add some more flux. When in doubt, add flux. That's my tip.
to you guys. That's a big blob of solder. I'm, it didn't burn the whole connector. So I cleaned it on my brass wire and then came back. I feel like I'm touching the plastic on the connector, which is fine. As long as the pins inside are still good. All right. So I think I got it all. I'll have to take out the board out of the board holder and kind of take an inspection, visual inspection. But now we're going to do these solder joints here at the end since we wicked them. And because it's ground, it's going to be real hard to flow the solder, especially with my micro pencil. So I kind of rotated the iron so it's the flat side. So it makes more physical contact and it transfers heat a lot easier. You could also use some hot air for assistance. You'll see how, how much easier the solder will flow when there's hot air. All right, so that, that side was done. Let me go on this side. I also saw a connector move, but the solder kind of put it back into its place. All right, that's a big bubble. All right, so I'm going to try to apply some here. So this, this side has a lot of surface area, so it requires a lot more solder. And all right, so I got that done. I did bridge these resistors together, which shouldn't be a big deal. I'll be able to clean it off right now. Let me finish what I'm doing here. Okay. Then I clean that off. I'm gonna use some wick and hot air and just touch the wick on the, there you go, on the solder joint I was trying to clear out. And now the solder joint has been cleared of that bridge. And then just one more time, I'm going to reflow this connector so that the solder joints are solid and making good contact. So you can see how I just kind of go fast left and right. So you can see how the solder joints are melted. Give it a second to cool down. Then I'm gonna drop some alcohol. And then I'm gonna scrub it. Basically the toothbrush helps kind of soften any kind of hearted uh, flux that might have kind of got a little too deep in there. So my little towel here to kind of absorb the alcohol that got mixed with the flux, which is what we want. We don't want any flux, ideally not like clean it off so that it can be a clean connector. A clean board, no need to make it dirty for no reason. Although technically the flux itself won't cause any issues, but it's just more of a workmanship. All right, so more like quality of work. I don't know how to describe it, but I like to make my work look as clean as possible, whenever possible. So all of these solder joints look pretty good to me. I'm using my blade to clean up any kind of burnt plastic that I may have burned but these all look pretty solid I know on the camera maybe it's not as easy to see I wish there was a better quality microscope camera like 4k this is 1080p camera 
but I'm recording everything else in 4K. Yeah, all this looks good. So I think this is good to go. So let's go ahead and test it out and see what happens. Okay, so now I have the board here in the housing. I'm gonna plug in the main flex. I'm gonna plug in the battery. What I'm gonna do is let's test to see if we get any kind of image. And I'm plugging in the charger. This is USB-C to USB-C uh, inline USB uh, meter. Although I'm not getting any image. Let me press on the connector. I wonder if the bottom connector. Oh, look at that. So I think, I think the charging port might be bad. If I press on, on this end, cause look, this is the daughter board the display plugs into here and from here, the display makes it to the main board, you know, through this main flex. So either the flex itself maybe got damaged here as well or the charging port. That's weird because I push, I put pressure. The screen might be off right now anyway. Well, let me turn it on. So I'm gonna press, press and hold the power button. I felt it vibrate like it's booting. No image. So if I push, yeah, see, look at that. So unrelated, if I push on here, I do get image. Well, fortunately, I don't have a good charging port or flex. I'll have to let the customer know that this is something they'll have to look into or they'll have to replace themselves. This came in from another shop. Otherwise I would have just ordered the parts and replaced it for the customer, but we definitely have image and we definitely have charging. I see 4.9 volts at 1.7 amps and it's a solid USB charging current. So at least I solved the connector issue on the main board. The other part seems to be a parts issue, which unfortunately I don't have for this video, but you can see how it has nothing to do with my connector job, which is unfortunate. All right, well, I'll mess with this further, but it seems like the connector part is done. Um, you know, so let's just go under the assumption that it's a con parts issue here. So, so there you have it. The connector has been replaced. You saw the whole process as far as removing the connector and soldering a new one back on. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Unfortunately, we didn't get a fully working phone in this video, but it was mostly about how to replace the connector, which is super common on these Samsung models. So let me know down below in the comments, if you ever seen anything like this, where multiple connectors or multiple issues happen on the same phone, like this one had a damaged main connector, but also it looks like it has a parts issue as well. It makes sense if it had a hard drop, it damaged that top connector, and then it maybe caused other issues as well. So we'll see. I'll, I'm hoping there's just a parts issue, but we'll never know. So thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, check out the links down below in the description. If you need this repair, let me know. If you need this t-shirt, it was also linked down below. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.